Hello and welcome to this demo video on this new procedural raw flesh material. This is the second version of one of our muscle um, materials. Um, so today I'll be showing you how to use this material and uh, the kind of stuff that we can make with it. So let's get started. Um, to, to bring it into your file, uh, what you have to do is append it. So you go file append uh, and then you can look for the file that you've downloaded from the store. Um, it's this one. You go to the materials folder inside there, and uh, any of these would work. Um, we can, we're going to use the, the one that says append, which has the default settings that I've chosen. Um, and so once you append that, you go into the objects materials. You can see it's right there. So once we assign it, can give each object that same material. So let's get into the node shader. So um, these are all the, the parameters that we can play around with. Um, right now the scale is, is kind of large, so I'm going to go with something more like 2.5, maybe even less. Um, okay. So as you can see by default, it comes connected to the object uh, texture coordinate. So uh, it's going to look really good as it's a procedural thing. But you could also uh, use the UVs, the generated ones. All these work. Um, for now, I'm going to go with object. Also, these seem to be scaled down these objects, so I'm going to go shift uh, control A and apply all the transforms to them. There we go. And now we can go with a more normal scale value. Okay. So um, we can change any of these parameters. As you just saw the scale, you can also go with um, color. So this is the main color. It's going to control main color of the of the flesh. So for, for realistic results, I'd suggest something quite desaturated um, around this like inner circle here. Uh, for example, if you want sort of a zombie look, you can go with uh, more of a greenish, yellowish color. Mm, if you want a more natural look, maybe something more pink. And this tint parameter here allows us to change mainly the vein color, uh, but it still tints the whole flesh. So if you want the veins to be more bluish, greenish, or yellowish, so that um, it's, it's mainly visible in the veins, but that's what that looks like. Um, let's see, lacunarity. This is a new sort of um, tool that Blender offers for Blender 4.0. Now, uh, it allows us to add a lot more detail to our materials. Of course, this is quite exaggerated, um, but in, it, it allows us to increase the detail there very specific ways, which is nice. Uh, let's set that to zero. Don't really have any detail. And then as that increases, you can start seeing a lot more of those sort of bumps that show up. There we go. Um, then we have this veins extension parameter, which basically is how far we want the veins to go, right? Um, so by default, it's set to 0.5. But if I want to make those veins extend further, I can just increase that. As you can see, they start extending more and more. And if I go the other way, they're going to start receding until we don't have any veins showing. So that gives a lot of flexibility in the material. Uh, we can also control the thickness of the veins. So 
want them to be a bit thinner. Uh, or go really thin. And it's barely visible here. Uh, or if we want the veins to be thicker, we can also do that. So we also have the bump strength for the veins. So if I were to set that to zero, we'd have these look really smooth. And if I set that to one, you now see the vein bumps. Um, now for we have other bumps, so the other bump strength refers to the smaller bumps that we see around here. If I were to increase that, you can see sort of these ridges around here. Um, if I set that to zero, it becomes a lot smoother. And then the main bump strength refers to the, the larger bumps here and the valleys for the veins. Um, if I increase that, you can see that becomes more prominent. If I make it, uh, if I make it smaller, then it's not not as bumpy over there. Now for the displacement height, that just determines the actual displacement of the mesh. So if I were to increase that, we'd get a lot more displacement. Or if I were to make it lower, then less displacement visible there. And the wetness just refers to the, uh, the, the clear coat on the on the flesh, so basically how smooth or, or rough we want that to look at the end. Uh, so we can make it really smooth, look like it's dripping wet, or if I set it to zero, it's going to look a lot rougher. Um, and lastly, we have this um, W value, which is just the random seed for it. So um, basically, if you look at the hand here, um, if I change that random seed, we can just see different variations of the same parameters. Actually, cool thing you can do is uh, change that more smoothly. So I'm just going to multiply that by a low value so we can visualize it a bit better. So if I move that, it, uh, it just changes smoothly, which is pretty nice. Um, and yeah, that just allows us to, to see different variations there. Now, um, that's, that's all the things we can change. I'm just going to show you a couple things we could do with that. So if you want this arm to be more of a, say, of a zombie type, we can make it more greenish maybe, yellowish, and then this tint be a lot more purplish. Um, there we go. Just going to change this a bit more. And uh, maybe a bit more lacunarity too. So lacunarity causes this, uh, these smaller details, like repeating details in sort of a fractal way, which is nice. Um, if we wanted maybe something more of like maybe this person got burnt pretty badly, we could do something like this. Where Um, 
Yeah. So we could even make this even darker. More red or something. So yeah, as you can see, there's there's many different variations you can do to it um, to achieve the results that you're looking for. So yeah, thanks for, for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed the, the material. And uh, 